Here we go. Episode 100 of the Hardline Sports Talk. Michael Merlo and John Michael Masiri here with you, JM. I cannot believe it. We have made it to 100 finally yep. here in the year 2023. Yep. I mean, it's crazy, man. Uh, when do we start? March 2021. So March 2021. It's been pretty a good. Little... You know, just just under an episode a week. So we we slacked off a little bit. Um, it's our but, vacations, you know. Yeah, but it's good, man. I mean, I feel like this show has changed a lot. It's also not changed much in certain areas, which is which is good. I think there are certain things that we've uh, kicked off from the beginning and not tweaked that kind of make up what we are. So uh, I I love. That we're here. I love where we're going. And uh, here's to 100 more, I guess. Definitely. Excited for the future. We have a great time doing it. And if you listen every week, we thank you. I, I love when people come up to us and say, oh, my God, we listen every week. We love it. That means the world. So thank you to all you people. And let's thank the Lord that it's July already and we're getting towards football season. Football, exactly. Like, right. I need it so bad. <laughs> I, I need it just too bad. I started today. There's this documentary out. It's called Quarterbacks. I think most people, if you're a football fan, have probably heard of it. It's on Netflix, and they follow Mariota, uh, Kirk Cousins, and Patrick Mahomes. And I started it today. I'm very excited to continue it. Like that's how much I'm itching for yep. football. Yep that that's a that's a hell of a mix of quarterbacks they got there. Yeah, it's that's interesting. Like one, two, like it kind of go all right, bad, good, great, right there with those it's three. Perfect. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to watch it. Um, I'm probably going to start it tonight right after yeah. we record this. Um, it looks really good, but yeah, man, I mean, we'll get into it a little later, but the jets on hard knocks, like, uh, that's going to, I don't think I've anticipated something coming out as high as I will be for that. Like, and you get, a, and you get a mixed review from Jeff fans. We are going to talk about that. There's a couple of other things we want to talk about with the jets. First, I'm going to talk giants and Saquon. We're going to do top 10 quarterbacks. We're going to start our top 10 lists for uh, the upcoming NFL season. We're going to do top 10 quarterbacks right here on this episode and a little baseball later on. We're coming toward the trade deadline and, uh, your Yankees are apparently motivated to get Otani, so we'll see about that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's start with the Jets, though. Uh, Thursday afternoon, they locked up star defensive tackle Quinton Williams. Uh, by the way, speaking of hard knocks, could you imagine having like a hard knocks lock uh, hold out? Oh here? my god, yeah, no, my ten of them did that. Yeah, before. I saw yeah, that. It's, oh, thanks. It's so true. To get this deal done, hmm. big time, Quinton deserves it. And when you look at the contract, the other defensive tackles got like Jeffrey Simmons and Dexter Lawrence just recently. Uh, it kind of it's it's right there. It's perfect. A good deal. I thought he could have gotten even more if he wanted to. Um, he doesn't four years with 96 and then 66 guaranteed. So good deal for both sides. Right. Yeah. I mean, obviously a huge contract. Most guaranteed money the Jets have ever given out in their franchise history. Finally, break that stupid streak that I hated hearing over and over again. That's nuts. about Jets draft picks and not bringing them back for a, a second contract. And it it was nuts, and it is very depressing <laughs> to think about. But look, uh, you know, we think I think, and my other Jet fans think the dark times for now, at least, are behind us. Um, you know, I think something that goes a little. Um, unrecognized here with Quinn and Williams is not only how great of a player he is individually, but I think an interior presence of pass rush, especially from an interior defensive lineman like him, it just makes the rest of the defense so great. And it makes those edge rushers so great. You know, we talk about it with the Rams, with Aaron Donald, the guy who has pioneered the, 12 to 20 sack season out of an interior defensive lineman, which is basically unheard of. And if you could get to that total, you're obviously one of the not only best defensive players in the league, but one of the best defensive players ever. And that's what Aaron Donald is. Do I think Quinn Williams can get to 20 sacks? That's a conversation for a different day. I don't think so. But my point is Aaron Donald makes guys around him so well. I mean, just think about those pass rushers we've seen with the Rams, even a guy like Leonard Floyd, who was a middle of the road kind of pass rusher, you know, nothing special, a good solid pass rusher goes to LA has basically some of the best years of his career there 
other guys, Dante Fowler, you see even having mm -hmm. a little bit of a career resurgence with the Rams. Just these guys coming off the, uh, what was that, Samson Ibu Cam or whoa, whoa, that guy who had like the two touchdowns against the Chiefs in like the greatest Monday night game of all time. Um, so basically my point is, when you have an interior defensive lineman like that who could not only stuff the run but get after the passer, I mean, that opens things up, and you're going to see what the Jets – I mean, I saw a stat, Quinn Williams, when he's on the field, the Jets have an 8.1% sack rate. When he's not on the field, the Jets have a 3.4% sack rate. I mean, 8.1% would be best in the NFL over a 16, 17-game season. Right. So, you know, you have Will McDonald, you have Bryce Huff, you have uh, Franklin Myers, you have – um, Jermaine Johnson, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, why am I drawing a blank right now? The guy that we, Carl Lawson. So there's guys all over the field for the Jets on this defensive line that can uh, rush from the edge. And I, I feel like a guy like Quinn and, you know, you lock him up now and he's going to not only help out your pass rush individually, but he's going to open it up for the rest of those guys. He's a game wrecker. Like you mentioned, uh, makes everybody on that defensive line better. And even talk about a guy, Chris Jones. I mean, have has Kansas City really had any star edge rushers? Oh, nope. And he has held that defense down for years. He's made that defensive front, um, that, you know, very yeah. and uh, that's, forceful. Th that's a defense that we always say, like, you know, the Chiefs obviously have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and Andy Reid. special on defense. But there's, right, exactly. I mean, ever since Matthew left, you're kind of just like, all right, outside of Chris Jones, you know, there are some good players on that defense, don't get me wrong. But outside of Chris Jones, like, what am I working with here? And I, that's a great point. I think that it kind of goes unrecognized is that Chiefs defense can get after the quarterback. We've seen it in the playoffs and we've seen it you know, maybe not win them games, but definitely help them win the game. Chris so. Jones wrecked that AFC championship yep. game. He was all over Joe Burrow uh, this past season. And by the way, he's up for a contract too. And I would guess that he's going to get more than Jeffrey Simmons got in Quentin Williams. Oh yeah. So, and, he, and he deserves it. He might even pass Donald, you know, who knows what the hell's going to happen. I mean, he's Quinnen had a great year last year, but Chris Jones has been doing it for years. I mean, Quinnen, that was his first really elite year. He had last year. Quinn, uh, Chris Jones been elite for God, it seems like almost a freaking decade now. I mean, I know it's not that long, but it feels like it. Yeah, it's really, since this entire Kansas City run, he's been yeah. he's been holding People. that defensive front down. Uh, speaking of the Jets' defense, though, uh, so Jeremy Fowler of ESPN has been posting every day, basically now these rankings of top ten at positions and honorable mentions from coaches, league executives, scouts a very position yep. uh, group in the league and been very interesting. I haven't really had any problems with any of the lists. They really seem, you know, sort of pretty good, pretty decent, pretty accurate. And the cornerback list came out a couple of days ago. And there was a lot of debate about the cornerback list. So Pat Sertain of the Broncos was number one, which I happen to agree with. And then Sauce Garner was two, which I also happen to agree with. But others, including Asante Samuel and even C.J. Garner-Johnson and Darius Slay, did not agree with uh, Sauce Garner being number two on this list and being the best rookie uh, defensive back last season. Uh, they thought it was Tariq Wollin of the Seattle Seahawks. And there were some major, major debates all over Twitter uh, Wednesday and into Thursday and even Tuesday night. Uh, you're a Jeff fan. I'm sure you were all over this as I was. Uh, I'll I'll start here with you. What was your uh, your thoughts on this? I think we're gonna agree here. All right. Yeah. I mean, listen. I'm not gonna come out and claim Sauce Gardner is the second coming of Deion Sanders. I think I think the sky's the limit for this guy. Obviously, you're a first team All Pro as a rookie. I mean, you could, like I said, sky's the limit. Right. What boggles my mind here, obviously I'm going to disagree with Darius Slay and what all these guys are saying. And I, I don't even think it's, you know, you can call me Jet Boy. Like, I just think it's, just look at the freaking numbers. Like I said, first team all pro, rookie, like, guy deserves it. How do guys like Darius Slay and guys like Asante Samuel, who played the game of football, played the position of corner, or are currently playing the position of corner like Darius Slay is, and not understand, like, not only does Sauce clear Woolen in the statistic category, but it's also just, as you can tell, league-wide consensus that Sauce is better. I mean, he's literally voted higher than Woolen on the list. So not only is the league higher higher on him than Woolen, 
But the stats also support it. The only I have this chart and this um this Jets account put it together. It's you know, it's it's facts, it's not you know, some stupid bias, it's literally just a breakdown of about I don't know. It looks like about 20 different statistics. I'll send it to you. Maybe we'll post it on our socials too, or I'll even put it up on this episode. We'll see. Um, and it's breaking down all the stats, comparing Woolen and Sauce, and it's out of 82 corners. So basically okay. every starting corner in the league. And the only two statistics that Woolen beats Sauce in is interceptions and interceptions per target percentage. So obviously if you have half a brain and you're not the biggest casual, like a nine-year-old who just plays Madden and doesn't watch football, you understand that interceptions don't tell the whole story when it comes to corners. I mean, we've seen guys put together huge interceptions. I mean, I think the poster boy for it, even though I actually think Trevon Diggs is a good corner, but 2021 when Trevon Diggs is picking everybody off, but he's also giving up 1,200 yards, you know, most people could agree he wasn't the best corner in the league that year. So sauce clears him in every category and it's pretty, it's a pretty big margin. I mean, I'll just throw a couple at you touchdowns allowed. Woolen's got five sauce has one QB rating allowed. Woolen 70 sauce 53.9 uh, penalties, which is the typical sauce argument. Uh, Mr. Hold like he's too handsy, this and that. Sauce had five penalties last year. Woolen had nine. And one more thing that I'm not going to use this as like the end-all be-all because, yeah, it's not that important, but it does have a little bit of significance. Woolen was awful against the run. I mean, just bottom of the league in terms of missed tackles, in terms of just overall run support. And Sauce was actually above average when it comes to run support. So I don't get it. I mean, this guy is Sante Samuels going at it with Revis too. He's just like who? I said he was a good corner, but like you're not a Hall of Famer. Shut up. It, you know what? I the only point that I think and I heard CJ Garner Johnson make and Darius Slay make was that DJ Reed last year had, was unbelievable, right? And they were arguably the best duo last season. And Tariq Woolen had nobody in that secondary. That's what you know. Those are the words of. Uh, CJ Garner Johnson. But I don't I don't think that's fair to punish Sauce for what he did. And yeah, I yeah. I don't know enough where, you know, was Reed getting the number one guy every time? Was it a mix? Was Sauce on the number one receiver every, you know, every game? I don't know enough to say. Who said this? No. That Who's was CJ Garner. Yeah. Right. As his teammate of Darius Slay is on the list when he had James Bradbury helping him out right or or ex-teammate whatever and what's funny is another point that was brought up and i'm not gonna but i'm not gonna use that against sauce like i still think sauce is better that's a point for woolen i get it but that's still not enough the other point they tried to make was that the new york media thing which is which made absolutely no sense that the new york media will bring you up the New York media will also bring you down. If Sauce has even a slightly down season, the world, they're, they're going to tear him to shreds, especially because mm-hmm. he talks a lot. And mm-hmm. listen, a lot of defensive players in the NFL, specifically cornerbacks, they talk a lot. That's yep. part of their game. Yep. And Sauce opens his mouth a little bit. It's exciting and right. it's fun and he's vocal on social media. He will get torn to shreds in this town right. if he had even any sort of demi. So, the media no, can I disagree with that fa- too. The 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 media can work in your favor can it, it, sometimes, but they're not gonna hype you up to this point where you're not the player that you actually are. Right. Like Doss is a legitimately great cornerback in his rookie year. They're not just gonna say, Oh yeah, he's unbelievable. Yeah. Like yeah. just because he's a rookie in New York. I think that that whole thing is just complete BS talking about the media. I mean, when we talk about baseball, right. And you know, you, I mean, a couple episodes ago when you were complaining about, you know, why do the Padres get this pass and the Mets are sucking and you know, everybody's down our throat saying we're such a disappointment, this and that. And I said, you know, it has to do with markets. I mean, the San Diego versus New York. And that makes sense in baseball. It makes complete sense. In a sport like football, where we always talk about it and say football is king, and it is, it's the NFL is king out of all the sports. 
There's no regional network. In a sport there's where there's no football. regional networks, it's a salary cap sport, so everybody's similar and money spent. Everybody consumes it on a national level. You got people watching Red Zone, people playing fantasy football. Everybody's excited for hard knocks. You got uh, NFL top 100 players lists. People eat that up. Like the NFL is nationally consumed. So to say that a guy plays in New York, so he's overrated, it's just a lazy argument. Josh Allen plays in Buffalo, which is in the middle of freaking nowhere and is probably the smallest market that or Green Bay in the NFL. And not only is Josh Allen huge, the Bills are huge. I mean, yep. you they know people know Bills players. People know who Jordan Poyer is and Ed Oliver, these guys who are, you know, good players by, you know, the, the, they're great players, Ed Oliver and Jordan Poyer, but they're not top 10 players in the NFL, but you still know who they are and they're pretty properly rated. So I don't think guys get underrated or overrated in a sport where their salary cap and everything's national and fantasy football and this and that. I mean, it's, that's a stupid and lazy argument. It was really dumb. And you know, for, for somebody like CJ Gardner Johnson and Darius Slay, who literally play in a city in which you are criticized for absolutely everything right. you do and will play both of them uh, last season. Everything they do is criticized. They are watched like Hawks, almost as critical as New York and Philadelphia. The fans are more psychotic. Like, right. you know exactly what it is, bro. You play in the same right. situation. Right. And by the way, you got $8 million after thinking you were going to get this massive long-term yep. contract. And now you're and granted he's on a good team and it's a yep. good situation for, for his team on, with, with Detroit. But right. who are you, bro? Yeah. Who want me? No, that was basically his response. The team's yeah. response to him. Exactly. So uh, very interesting debate there. And listen, I, I, they made one point, which I, kind of agree with i'm pretty sure they made this point where you know don't compare him to revis just yet like yeah like obviously yeah, you're not yeah, yeah. nobody's darrell revis yet okay let's not yeah. go crazy like sure can he be the next darrell revis yeah yeah of course yeah. but i oh also before we move on i just want to say about the whole corner thing and oh was he playing one side of the field was he always on the number one receiver i think that the days of that are a little behind us when it comes to match up with the number one guy, follow him around just because of the way defenses are run now and how complex the passing offenses are and everything like that. I don't think it's extinct, but another thing is sauce was a rookie. So you really like, they knew he was going to be a good player. They wouldn't have drafted him number four if they didn't think so, but right. you really think they had a defensive scheme going into week one for sauce to be following the number one receiver around at all times. I Probably mean, not. I know you make adjustments mid season, but I don't know if you do that. See what happens this year. I'm excited. I'm excited to watch him. I'm excited to watch the Jets. And we'll all be excited to watch the Jets on Hard Knocks because yep. this is going to be entertaining. I saw a meme today, which I absolutely loved. Uh, it was Aaron Rodgers talking to Zach Wilson saying, the psychedelics work, bro. If you take them, dude, you <laughs> will be better, I promise. Uh, but I'm very excited for Hard Knocks. I, you know, I understand a lot of Jeff fans – that I've been talking to, especially today, are not happy with it. You know, they think there's a curse attached no. to being on Hard Knocks. No, there's not. Um, you know, just the, the unnecessary attention. I don't think there's – why would there be a curse? You have the Lions last year who almost made the playoffs, had a, their best season in recent memory. Yeah, they didn't make the, the playoffs, though. The, the Jets were on it. I mean, and we made the AFC Championship game that year. Yeah, like, that was that year? Yeah. Was it 13? I thought they were on it No, 13. no, no, no. It was – it was the year after they went – wait, actually, hold on. No, I know they made the AFC Championship, but I'm trying to remember. I think it was the year after Sanchez's rookie year when they were when they went 11-5 and five and lost to the Steelers. So the second AFC Championship. I believe it was in between both AFC Championship seasons. Well, the team isn't happy about it, obviously. And um... – yeah, but these guys are used to the media attention. Not not the have... team, though. Not like the players. Yeah, the management. And the... Management, executives, owners, coaches. And coaches, especially the coaches. I mean, the co the coaches want everything to go so perfectly, especially to start training camp. And right. listen, it's it's a lot of new players. It's you know, it's a new quarterback. It's a new system. You know, you want to get as much you know normalcy as you possibly can to start training camp and start your year. 
So I would understand, especially just, you know, we played football. We understand how practices go and, you know, how structured everything is. Coaches right. want everything to be as perfect as possible. I, th- I, think, I think if this was like, you know, a situation with a hot young team and a hot new quarterback, you know, a 24-year-old guy going into his third year or second year or whatever, you know, it's a little bit of a different story. But I think with a, you know, a guy like Rodgers who's been around for so long, knows how to go about things the right way, knows what it takes to win and everything like that, I think that'll help things. Yeah. I think, it, I, yeah, I think it will. But also, I think these young guys are going to eat it up. You know, like yeah. you talked about before, like Garrett Wilson, Sauce Gardner, they're going to love this. Right. And I'm going to love it. I, I think it's going to be incredibly entertaining. Because again, you have a team that is legitimately the story of the league, like the top right. story in the league. If you were going to rank the teams, you know, obviously the Dallas is always going to be up there. But this, it's the Jets. Like you have arguably the most notable star right now in the sport it playing in new york right <laughs> like it, it yep. doesn't get much doesn't better get bigger than that yeah so um very excited for hard knocks Are you, so you're just completely on board with it like excited oh yeah i mean coming up to it i was like oh, i don't want to deal with it's like oh, i don't want to deal with the distraction yeah but this would be kind of sick like it's going to be entertaining. I, I saw a Jets fan say it in a comment at, on Instagram, and I, I wish I could like it more than once. Like, they just said, like, to all these people, like, saying, like, don't, I don't like it. It's a distraction. It's like, dude, just enjoy what we got going on. Like, this is sick. Like, we got Rodgers. We're, we got Super Bowl expectations right now, and we're about to get an all-access view of everything. Like, just enjoy it. You really think it's going to derail the season, Hard Knocks? Like, come on. And by the way, both all these teams now have great social media teams, great production teams, and they have their own, you know, like short clips. I know that's what I was saying. Yeah, the Jets have that one Jets drive thing. Like it's and that they have interviews and all that crap. That's gonna be. I saw them promote it. They were like uh, one Jets drive Mondays and then Hard Knocks Tuesdays, right? Which is really cool. The Giants do a great job with that too. I was watching a couple videos last week. They do a great job with that stuff. So. Uh, there's always going to be these inside looks with your team. Sure, you'd rather it be your social media team and your people doing it, sure. But we live in an overstimulated world. These guys are used to it. I mean, seriously. Yeah, we do. I do 20 different things at once. I mean, none of my, our whole generation, we can't concentrate on one thing anyway. So they'll be all right. It'll be fun. I'm very excited to watch. And I'm going to check out, you know, the uh, – and check out their one Jets drive too a little bit, you know? Yeah. Why not? I don't know if they'll be doing both at the same time. They probably- no, they are. They said one Jets drive Mondays, hard knocks Tuesdays. That's the tweet I saw. I'll go back and check. That's that's the tweet I saw. Just a little overkill, but all right. Somebody just uh I got a bleach report. Now like we're about to segue into your boy Saquon. So I just have yeah. a quick question. The Jets and the Giants practice like very far from, not very far from each other, but like they're not like across the street from each other, right? No, the Giants are at the Quest Diagnostic Center, which you could see from that life. Right, and the Jets go to Florham Park? Yeah. Right, okay. Why, is that just like... No, I was just saying like, you know, am I going to be watching the Jets practices and see like Daniel Jones running in the background? No. (laughs) No, they're not not neighbors. They're not neighbors when it comes (laughs) to that. Giants put the logo on the field, uh, the uh, 50 yard line. See what the Jets do. Mm-hmm. It's been the NFL logo for, you know, the existence yeah. of the most boring and bland stadium on planet yep. Earth. Yep. So uh, hopefully they can uh, maybe put their logo too. I'm trying to find this tweet here. I don't know if I can because it's a lot of Quinn and Williams stuff. That's but right. let's move. Let's move on to the Giants here uh, because, listen, Giants kind of laid low a little bit you know then signing daniel jones you know they haven't been the talk of the town when it comes to the nfl here in new york um they play in a very difficult division it's going to be a tough year i think they're gonna have some success we'll get into that later on um in the next few weeks but right now they're having a little contract dispute with saquon barkley um he is right now set to play on a 10.1 million dollar tag uh unless they come to an agreement on a contract extension By Monday. Right. All right. Well, there's a couple things to look at here. Number one, as a Giants fan, I'd be a little worried about what Josh Jacobs is doing right now. Just keep a little eye on that because he seems like he's ready to pull off a Le'Veon Bell situation. Um, So that could have a little bit of an effect on Saquon's situation. The thing here 
with Saquon is if I'm the Giants, I'm I'm not gonna tell the guy to like go screw himself, but like you have the you have all the leverage you have in the, the world. Like, sit, don't get me wrong, Saquon is a dynamic player, and with him on the field, like this Giants offense is better. Yeah. Do I think that the Giants should say, "All right, Saquon, here's four years, sixty million, or whatever the hell he's asking for"? Hell no. I mean, this guy has dealt with injuries throughout his career. Do we need to go on about running backs and the 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 lifespan no. and the time on the shelf before they expire? Like, no. I mean, <laughs> how many examples have we gone through? Can I can I just say this for a second? How many games has Saquon missed in five seasons? If I had to guess off the top of my head, I'd say 20. How much? Answer's 22. 22. 20. Yep. Okay. He's 26. Okay. It'll be 27 in February. Okay. He wants to sit out the season. Who the hell is giving a 27-year-old running back who's missed 22 games in his career plus a full season? Yep. Who's giving him a long-term contract? worth more than the Giants are offering, whatever the long-term contract is. Right. Nobody. The answer is after, nobody. After you just paid your – so you don't have – Daniel Jones' rookie rookie contract, that's gone. Right. You extended him. Yeah. Now you got Barkley, who is asking for all this money, and you still – the Giants improved weapons. They got Waller. They got Paris Campbell, which – Paris Campbell, baby. Let's go. Jesus Christ. Uh, they got Jalen Hyatt. You know, they, they got some – the Giants, I'm sorry. They're, we'll get into it when we talk about them. But they're filled. They're freaking loaded with, like, wide receiver threes and twos. They got speed. They, one thing they, they do. Is- they, they do. Especially like Waller is an athletic tight end. But my point is probably could spend a little money – more money at wide receiver in the future. Probably right. could spend a little more money on the interior offensive line. Probably could spend a little money on the defense a little bit. You know, the, those linebackers are still not good. and you're going to dump this money on a 27-year-old running back who I think Saquon is one of these guys where he's a superhuman athlete. You know, like he's he's just – you see it. He's still explosive. I and mean, you saw that video of him working out. Like he's still a freaking beast. Right. But, but a guy – like I don't think he's like a Derrick Henry who I think is our, is – Starting to show a little bit of signs of decline, Henry. He's just such a freaking big guy that he could get away with it. But Derrick Henry's never had any major injuries before. Saquon's gone through major injuries. Saquon's a more explosive cut type of back where Henry's a little bit more of a, you know, mows you down. He'll, you know, he's a big dude. So I see Saquon the same way I see Dalvin Cook right now. Are we going to give Dalvin Cook? I'm not saying the Jets. Is anyone going to give Dalvin Cook four years, 60 million or something like that? No. Go ahead. Saquon's not looking for that. Like, and he said that multiple times. He's not looking to reset the market. He's not looking. Yeah. yeah, I mean, his agents must want to kill him. He's not looking to get the Christian McCaffrey contract. He said that was about $16 million a year. I think he's looking 15, right? I think he's looking to be paid, you know, he he wants he wants to be paid for what he's done, and I right. can understand that to a point. But you have to realize something: like this isn't old management. You know they did not draft this guy, right. okay? And these are smart people running the organization now. They have smart offensive minds in the room that are probably sitting there saying, "We'd love to have Saquon Barkley," but guess what? At the end of the season last year, we ran the offense through Daniel Jones instead of Saquon Barkley, and we won a freaking playoff game. Yeah. So, of course, they'll miss Saquon, but they could do without the running back. It, it sucks to say to do without the position, but they can do without Saquon. And by the way, you mentioned it. In a year from now, will they want to spend the money on a number one wide receiver or the running back? They're right. going to want a number one wide receiver at some point uh, to give Daniel Jones even more weapons. Yep. So I mean, you just invested all this money in Daniel Jones. I right. Mean, you, you, it's got to work. And I think is what Saquon the guy though to help. I think it work? What, I think what they've done with the offense is a little bit comparable to you know what we've seen the Chiefs do the past couple of years, where they just added a bunch of speed guys. They don't have right. that number one wide receiver. You could say the tight end is, 
fine. Obviously not comparing Waller to Kelsey, but the main receiver is in the tight end. Right. There's speed guys on the outside, no major names. That That's kind of what they're doing. I don't know if that's sustainable or not, but they're going to want to add, you know, the Stefan Diggs like they did in Buffalo. You know, they're going to want to add the AJ Brown like they did in Philadelphia. Yeah. So you can't pay the running back what the running back wants. Yeah, I, especially, listen. I mean, what we but, see in the NFL today with all the running backs by committee and everything. Like, you don't need to dump all your 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 eggs in one basket when it comes to the running back. Like, you could have an elite rushing attack or, or a, you know, top half of the league rushing attack with more than one guy. You know, you could have your 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 third down back and your speed guy, mm-hmm. and then you could have your goal line back and stuff, and you could make it work. And they drafted a guy in the third round, fourth round. You know, yeah. they, you know, they drafted a backup running back, and they had Matt Breida still. Um, uh-huh. Just very quickly, we say all this. Saquon Barkley's going to be a New York Giant. They're going to get a contract. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, because it makes the most sense for both sides. You know, he's not going to go into this season without a long term contract. So whatever is on the table, and I think the Giants will up their offer a little bit out of respect. I think it's really low right now. I think the, the guaranteed money right now is at nineteen million dollars. That's not enough because if he stayed on the tag for two years, it'd be twenty two million guaranteed. They're going to up that. He'll be a right. Giant. If I'm the Giants. If I'm the Giants, I would rather – I mean, the contracts are weird these days in the NFL. It almost seems like you could give a guy freaking two years, $1 billion, and the yeah. team will still find ways to break it up and get exactly. under the cap. Um, but if I'm the Giants and he asks for more guaranteed money, I'll say, all right, we'll up the guaranteed money, but going to have to take a year off the contract then. Mm-hmm. You know, like you want to go from $19 million to $23 million guaranteed? Okay, we're going to take that – I'm just going to use the four years 60 as an example. We're going to take that four years 60. Now we'll give you three years 44 or whatever, and we'll give you 23. We'll make it half guaranteed because, you know, yeah, you give them more guaranteed money. And yeah, the ratio of guaranteed to total money is better for Saquon. But also now you take a year off where now his contract's up when he's 29, not 30. I think it's going to be around four years. 45 million, 30 guaranteed, nothing guaranteed after um year three. I can't I take there, back I take back what I just said because I just realized I think with the guaranteed money, when you take the year away, it's gonna up his his cap hit. So right. they're they're gonna you know. they're gonna give this contract knowing they can get out of it after year three. Right. After year two or three. Right. That that's the way this that's con- a smart thing to do. It's the same thing they did with Daniel Jones. Yeah. The Giants can get out of the contract. With and you know what you do? You, too, if it doesn't you work. know what you do? Beat the crap out. Of, not literally, but work the hell out of this guy for the first three years. Then they get did it. it. They yeah. did it with Jones and Barkley last year. They're yeah. like, you know, these guys are going to be here. We'll run them into the ground. They did exactly. that. Literally ran them into the ground. Yeah. It was absolutely crazy. That's what they'll do. You know, exactly. You, you mentioned it. They work the cap in so many different ways. It's not even going to matter. Nobody knows what these contracts are in the books. Giants have a ton of cap space after the next year. They'll probably front load it into, ne- into the next season, and Don't that'll be it. Dude. Yeah, he'll, who knows what the hell's going on. He'll be, he'll be a giant. Yeah, he will. All right, let's head into our top 10 quarterback lists heading into the 2023 NFL season. Pretty pumped. Do all these, like you know, we mentioned before, we had these Jeremy Fowler release those uh, rankings. I didn't even, I actually forgot even to look at that, like how the NFL and the scouts did. But did they do whatever. everything? They did everything. Oh, Wait, yeah. Did they release quarterbacks? I think they released quarterbacks. Yeah. Dove Cleveman. You know, who Doug Cleveman yeah. is. Yeah. Is he? I don't Dove even know Cleveman. if he's real. Is he not real? I, I, I he, he is, is real. real, but he's like a, he's a bot. Like he talks like a bot. Does he really? I follow him though because he tweets everything. So he does. There's also another account too on Twitter that's like MLA or something. ML. Oh something yeah, 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 yeah. I like him too. I've been stalking yeah. his accounts lately. But yeah. Anyway, let's get right into it. You want to start us off top ten quarterbacks? So we're gonna read off each. We're gonna d- debate if there's a major, you know, surprise. Right. Uh, you know, we'll go ten, ten, nine, nine. You know. All right. Um. You start us off. I'd say there were about. 12 to 13 guys that I considered making my top 10. So, you know, three guys are considered for the 10 spot. Right. Um, I ended up going with Geno Smith is my 10th best quarterback in the NFL. Um, 
it's undeniable, like, what he did last year. I mean, when you look at the numbers again, you're kind of, like, in shock. I mean, he finished ninth in MVP voting. He probably should have been higher. Um, 30 touchdowns, 11 picks. Had, I think, the best completion percentage in the NFL. And, I mean, shocked a lot of people. It wasn't like he was in a really bad situation, but he also wasn't in the best situation. So, I got Geno at 10. Yeah, nobody expected much. Um, I, I went back and forth putting Geno 10 or not. I went with somebody else, though, left Geno off. But uh, I have no complaints with Geno there. I went Dak at number 10. Um, you know, we're kind of doing this list. You know, we want somebody going into next year. But like you mentioned before, we want to also value what they were able to do last season. I think Dak Prescott's struggles last season were overrated. And they're always going to be overrated. Right. You know, his success is going to be overrated. And his failures are going to be overrated when playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Right. And my leg is currently stuck on the table. Oh, my God. I, might th- I almost just tore my knee up <laughs> sitting down. Um, Dak Prescott, though, a lot of interceptions that he threw last season. They were drop passes or tipped. Really unlucky. Um, I still trust Dak Prescott. I think he's a top 10 quarterback, but, you know, he's 10. Yeah, uh, I'll piggyback off what you were saying because I have him ninth. Dak oh, there we go. Quarterback. Um. Yeah, I mean, you're right. His successes are going to be exaggerated and his failures are going to be exaggerated. And, you know, I think that was probably the most difficult situation that Dak was in to date as Dallas Cowboys quarterback. And don't get me wrong, there was not a, exactly a shortage of weapons. Um, you know, the tight end Schultz, he left, but he's an above average tight end. You know, Zeke's not exactly what he used to be, but him and Pollard were a great running back tandem still. And then you have CeeDee Lamb, who's a legit number one receiver. Now, behind CeeDee Lamb, that's the part where you're like, okay, that's where he was missing out, and that's why it was probably the worst situation he's been in in his career as a Cowboys quarterback. Um, But this guy threw 37 touchdowns in 2021. So, you know, um, he'd probably – he'd be higher on this list if we're going from last year – from two years ago into last year. You know, I'd probably have Dak number six, number seven maybe. Yeah. Yeah. but yeah, I think you know the the fifteen picks last year, the the performance in the playoffs, it, it, it definitely uh, hurts his rating. And yeah, that's why I have him not. And, and and like you know, we kind of just overrate what he's supposed to be. He can win you a Super Bowl in the right situation, right? But more more likely than not, he's not going to be the number one reason why you won the Super Bowl. I think we got to get to get to that point with him because he's he's still really good. Uh, okay, number nine, I have Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, to, uh, it's, it's injuries, right? Like that's the problem with him. That's, you know, nah, that's, I did, he did not make my list. I was surprised. Really? He, yeah. I, and he was not even in my honorable mentions, to be honest with you. He was like probably number 14 or something like that. Yeah. I, I'm going to it here. And, you know, they, they have great weapons right now with, um, Jalen Waddle and Tyree kill. And, you know, he obviously was, um, you, you know, they were obviously very explosive last season, but they win when this guy plays, right? They win games, even dating back to last season. Um, so I am expecting big things from two of this season. Uh, he had a nice season last year when he played. You know, he was good last season, uh, 25 touchdowns, eight picks. Um, I trust him. Quarterback rating of 105. I trust him when he's on the field. It's just staying on the field. Yeah, exactly. And I definitely see Tua as one of those guys who could shoot up this list. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's the health. Um, let's just see how he does. Like, if he was coming off his second great year in a row with the injuries, I'd maybe have him 10 or something like that. But it's just, there's not enough track record for me, plus the injuries. You know, that's why that's why he missed the list for me. Um, all right, number eight. I have Lamar Jackson. Uh, I think right. when you get in this range, I feel like we're going into another tier now. We're getting into like that, that you know, tier two uh, out of quarterbacks. Yep. So, you know, Lamar, guys obviously got almost as, basically as much talent as anybody in this league besides Patrick Mahomes. Basically, we've seen what he can do when he puts it all together. I mean, you know, you know unanimous MVP. Um, kind of hasn't had those weapons that we've been looking for Lamar to have his whole career when it comes to the receiver position. I mean, he's got Mark Andrews, who's, you know, probably the third best tight end in the NFL. Um, But 
outside of that, I mean, you know, Rashad Bateman hasn't really panned out for them. You know, you got guys like Devin Duvernay and some of these guys that they've gone through over the years. I mean, Hollywood Brown is the best guy he's probably ever had. Yeah. And, you know, we know what Hollywood's like. He's one of those guys like a, like a Robbie Anderson type where he can be a deep threat and go for 150 yards in a game, but he could also be completely X out of the game. He's just not consistent enough. Not that, number one all around great receiver that you know a lot of these best quarterbacks in the league have so with zay flowers there with obj there i think that he'll take a step he should take a step i mean i think it's basically time like it's go time for lamar um i I think the excuses are kind of over they paid him you know we're, we're ready to go here so lamar's eight um the highest i could have seen him being on this list is seven. I, I really don't see how you can get him higher than that, but he landed at eight. Yeah. And for me, he's eight as well. And I flip flop between the next guy at seven multiple times. I almost just did it. And I said, you know what? No, I'm right. not going to do it. Uh, so I'm going to stick with Lamar. At eight. I'm going to say this right now. Lamar is going to be the, oh my God, he's the runaway MVP for the first four or five weeks of the season. They have a new offensive coordinator, uh, Todd Munkin. He was the offensive coordinator with Georgia. It's going to take the league, I think, a couple of weeks to kind of understand and really figure out that offense. Right. Okay. He is a legit OC for the first time in a few years now. Right. I'm excited to see what Lamar does. I'm excited to see what this Ravens team does. But for the first few weeks of the season, they're going to be world beaters. They're going to be the team like – Oh my God, this is finally going to be the year. They're going to be the hyped up team early. Right. Lamar's going to be great. We're going to think, oh my God, top five quarterback. It'll come down, back down to earth. But he's going to move up after the season, but he's eight. He's eight. Right. That division, you know, we'll see if the Bengals four can te- hold on le- again. Legitimately four teams that yeah. if you told me any of them were in the playoffs, I would not be surprised. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the Browns, you have to think that the Browns are going to be on the come up with the Watson second year. You'd think that he'd get better. They're very scary. Very um, good. Another guy that could very easily be on this list, and we kind of say it for the past couple of years now, a guy that could be on this list easily if he's you know out of trouble and playing well. Right. Uh, all right, number seven. I think that this is going to be one of the last ones where we match up up until we get to like maybe the top three. Uh, I'm going to go Trevor Lawrence at seven. Wow, you're shaking your head now. Okay. I'm a little scared now. Um, I have Lawrence at seven. I think that there's no – doubt that this guy could I don't want to say he could reach a Mahomes level but he could get pretty damn close I mean you know the jump from year one to year two uh the year one let's just throw it away okay I mean if if Urban Meyer was I think Patrick Mahomes head coach Pat Mahomes might throw 17 picks and 12 touchdowns too like that guy was just a freaking joke and you know it's his rookie year and there's a lot of stuff going on so Lawrence was, I feel like you take that first half and that second half and you could kind of separate him into two different seasons because he just seemed to get better week after week after week. And you saw all these explosive plays the and the, the improv and him making plays with his feet and just putting balls in perfect places. Even you want to talk about breaking up first and second halves. How about the freaking playoff game against the Chargers? You take away that first half, he throws four picks and they lead, which by the way, I had a substantial amount of money on the Chargers that game. And Brutal. we did our playoff bracket and up until like the, the Super Bowl, it would have been perfect if the Jaguars hadn't freaking come back in that game. Um, but, you know, came out, led a one of the best comebacks we've seen in recent playoff memory. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there's no doubt that Lawrence could be fantastic. And I, I think th- this time next year, he'll be top five. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about Lawrence um, and I'll talk about him in a minute. Because I think that I, I think Mahomes is on his own like kind of level there. Like I think he's like his own kind of like master tier. And then there's the Burrow and the Allen and uh, the Herbert. I think Lawrence is like literally knocking on that door. And I think after this season he will be in that class. Right. Uh, so I went Rodgers here at seven. Um, Aaron Rodgers uh, obviously down year for him last season. Twenty six touchdowns, twelve picks. Uh, you know, the receivers were not as, you know, great as they usually are. He dealt with a thumb injury that he suffered early on in the season. So, you know, 
it's kind of being used against him here. But also when you compare Lawrence and that's who's that's who's above him at six, like Lawrence was better than him last season and he's younger. And I believe that he's going to be better than him this season. So if I needed somebody for one game next year, I'm, I'm going to go with Trevor Lawrence because I think he's getting that much better. So that was my reasoning for Rogers at seven. I think he's going to have a really great year with the Jets. Um, he's got great, you know, better weapons than he had last season. Um, but I'm just going to, he's an old man. I'm going to stick him there. All right. Um, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one, but maybe we'll get into it uh, after we read off everything. Um, all right. My number six is going to be a guy that uh, you just mentioned that's not named Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I have Justin Herbert as my number six quarterback. In the league. Wowza. And, you know, we've talked uh, last year when we were talking about MVP predictions or we were just going around you talking about Mahomes and Allen and all those guys. And we said that you could kind of group, and I think you could add Lawrence to this now, but you could kind of group Lawrence, Herbert, Mahomes, Allen, and Burrow with these guys are going to kind of always be, all right, he had a better year than this guy. And he had the best year, you know, and he had the worst year. Like, they're always going to be interchanging with who had the best season year after year. Yeah. Justin Herbert for me, and, you know, I'll. it's very hard for me to argue for this, uh, you know what? I'll wait until I get to my next, my next number. All right. So you go number six, and then I'll get to my number five. Yeah. Um. Same thing. Like you know, I don't really need to explain more. I explained, um, why I love Lawrence. Lawrence is six. Um. You know, he's just he's in that class now. He's he's young. He's unbelievable. Getting Ridley and, this year too. I, I keep forgetting about that. He, yeah. Ridley's gonna explode on this yep. team. So wow. Pause. Big pause. Add that to a sound bit. <laughs> That's my bet. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, he's I'll gonna explode. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I, as long as as long as he doesn't put pick Jags money line before every game. <laughs> yeah, that that yeah. might be a problem. Which, by the way, we haven't really talked too much about that. What the hell are these all these guys doing betting in the NFL? You know what we're gonna do next episode? We're gonna read all of the gambling rules and we'll yeah. see which ones we would break <laughs> or not break uh, if we you know were tempted enough. Right. <laughs> Isaiah yeah. Rogers, like you're a freaking. Like, that's not that guy's two like, he's, corner, and you're betting like what he's are you the doing? he's the worst out of everybody. I mean, he's sitting there betting on his own teammates' yeah. props, putting a thousand dollars on him. That's great. That's like, wow. Dunk can you be? Can they bet on other stuff? Like, can they bet on baseball? They can bet on whatever they want. That's not football, just and they just bet on football. No, but they stupid. if they bet on college basketball in the team facility, they could get that. Like that's half of the suspensions. That's most of the, sus- the, sus- the suspensions. If you're not suspended for the full year, it's because you're betting on something else in the team facility. Just well, leave go outside and bet. sit in your car and freaking bet. Then. That might be a facility. That what are you doing? Uh, all right, fine. Drive half away. Drive away. away. Go drive away. Um, all right. My number five is Aaron Rodgers. And what I, the point that I was going to make when I was talking about Herbert is I don't understand – the way I think we're kind of being clouded by age and we by definitely are the sexy pick and everything like that when it comes to these two guys. And I want to compare something. So I got a couple big points. Number one, I'm getting a phone call to my house at 940 right now. Who When's the, the last time you got a house call? Here? Do you hear that? Do you hear hey, it? When's the last time you had a house call? I don't like, know. This is the first time I think ever on the episode that this has happened. Anyway, who the who calls landlines? It's probably like my grandma and I'm being a piece of crap right now. But yeah, yeah, um, anyways, Aaron Rodgers versus Justin Herbert. I want to use this as a huge point. So Justin Herbert has very similar stats to Aaron Rodgers last year. Yes. Like, it's very similar. Touchdowns, picks, like very similar. Aaron Rodgers coming off two time MV- two MVP seasons in a row. Justin Herbert. You know, rookie of the year on the come up, right? Could see he's got an electric arm, everything like that. You want to compare situations. Rodgers goes from Devontae Adams, a healthy David Bakhtiari, who besides Trent Williams is the best left tackle in the league. And he comes from that situation. He loses Adams. Bakhtiari's out for the year. You have a, a receiver core, a receiving core of Romeo Dalbs, Christian Watson, and Alan Lazard. You know, nothing too, with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon on that offense, nothing too crazy. And then you have uh, Justin Herbert with the best pass-catching running back in the league, maybe besides Christian McCaffrey. 
you know, Keenan Allen, who has ha- definitely had injury problems. He was, he was banged up a lot. Um, last same year. thing with Mike Williams had some injury problems, but two guys there who could be legit. I mean, Keenan Allen's proved he's a number one legit receiver. Mike Williams is one of the best red zone threats in the league. Prob- uh, definitely went healthy, a top 30, 20 receiver in the league. Yes, but those guys didn't miss time. Let's not basically my, mention my point, they didn't miss time last year. My point is if the stats are so similar and you had similar situations, if anything, Roger's situation was worse last year, but they were both kind of crappy situations. Then you have Rogers switching teams and or, I'm sorry. Then you have Rogers coming off two MVP seasons and proving that, all right, it was a bit of a down year last year, but for, for, kind of some good excuses, and throw in Roger's thumb injury, which people just seem to forget about. Take into account what Tom Brady did his last year at the Patriots. He was bad. We were saying, nah, this might be in the Brady. He goes to the Buccaneers. Oh, did the Patriots see something? And that's why they didn't really want him back. And Brady's best days are behind him. Then he comes out, throws 40 touchdowns, wins a freaking Super Bowl. So I think when you take into account the years before last, and where Rodgers still is in his career and the situation he had last year, that's my argument for why he's better than Herbert. And I almost had him at number four, and I was uh, back and forth, back and forth. I think I'd literally, as soon as we started recording this, I switched it. But number five is Rodgers. All righty. There we go. Um, I have Herbert pretty high on this list. Um, you know how much I love my Justin Fine. Herbert. I don't think he can be higher than four, and I don't think you're going to have him higher than four, but right yeah but um i'm up to five correct yes you are michael jalen hurts number five um (laughs) pains me to say it um but he's number five listen he had an unbelievable year last season um really took the league by storm uh because we questioned whether or not he could be a legit passer in this league, and and he really just ran with it. He was, you know, right. going to be the MVP probably if he didn't get hurt. Right. Um, but he's not higher on this list because we've we've seen it from you know Mahomes, Burrow, Allen, Herbert for a few years now. Right. And again, it's not like it's a knock on him, but you know, let's see it again. You know, right. let's see it right. again let's see it with the first place schedule that they're going to have and right. i'm not using the schedule as a you know reason why he was so great last season but their schedule is pretty brutal brutal let's see him with even more adversity this season let's see them with a the target on their back this right. season i'm very interested to see that because if he performs the same way what is he two on this list three yeah possibly yeah and that's the thing is he had a great situation last year and I don't really see how you can use that as a knock, though. Like, he did what he had to do. If he stays healthy, he's a maybe the MVP of the league. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he certainly would have made a very good case for it. So, I think that's where Mahomes just separates himself is you could kind of put him in basically any situation and he could thrive. Um, and you might have the same situation for Hurts. I mean, he's very young in his career. So, we don't know if Jalen Hurts is a guy that you could do that with also. But... I think it kind of proves that a lot of these guys, if you put them in really good situations, the sky's the limit. And you know, I said my that great. a lot. This is, I think I said that like four times today. I got to find a new fr- – what else can I say besides the sky's the limit? Um, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Yeah. Like DJ Khaled. Can be, can be, as, can be as great as he wants. You know what's funny you mentioned that? I'm not saying Mahomes is a system guy, but I think he has landed in the perfect spot with Andy Reid. The one guy that I think you could put in legitimately any situation and he would thrive, and you know I have my gripes with him for personal reasons, I think it's Burrow. I think you could put Burrow in legitimately any situation right. and he would. you would see, oh, this guy's a good quarterback. I actually, I don't think this is like a stupid take. I think every quarterback is a system quarterback because I think the phrase like, it's kind of like, yeah, no crap, like a system quarterback. Oh, my God, you put a guy in a really good system designed for the specific way that he plays and he's good? Like, yeah. what? Like, obviously, you put Pat Mahomes in a freaking wing T offense, he's going to suck. Yeah. You, right. you, know, you give him the, oh, yeah. the Jim Brown and, you know, three tight ends and a fullback. Like, coaches are so great. Coaches are so important and innovative now where it's like, yeah, you know what? They have different systems that they work around every yeah. quarterback, and 
it's going to work. So co- it's just coaching is so important in this yeah, league, especially with how complex these offenses are these days. Yeah. So you you know what? You're a hundred percent right. All quarterbacks are system quarterbacks. Who gives a rat's ass if right. they are or not? But uh, I think Burrow could work with anybody. I do. All right. I'm not going to get into it. You just talked about him. I have Hurts number four. Um, yeah. You know, couldn't have had a better season. Could have won the Super Bowl, but played his ass off in the Super Bowl. And I think he proved to a lot of people that were still downing him because there are people still downing him going into the Super Bowl. And if you're still downing him now, I mean, I don't get it, but single-handedly kept that team in the game in the Super Bowl, for sure. Had a fantastic performance. Yeah. Um, you know, definitely rooting against him, but uh, we'll see what happens. Um, anyway, number four for me, Justin Herbert. You know, we kind of talked about him before. Um, you know, just when you watch him, you're kind of in awe of him like you are when you watch Mahomes. He makes those kind of throws. He's got a big-time power arm. Yeah. One thing that we didn't mention before when speaking about him, I'm very interested to see what happens now with Kellen Moore as the OC mm. because they had uh, Joe Lombardi over there, who I I don't know why. Like I thought I knew who the OC was there, and like right. Joe Lombardi's team does not ring a bell. Whatever. Right. Um, but they have a new OC now. Kellen Moore had his issues with um, Dallas, and I think that's just because of you know the personnel he had there. I think in the right situation, Kellen Moore could be a legitimately great offensive uh, play caller. And right. I think this is one of those situations where you have a quarterback that's just so talented. Right. And I think you're going to see an even bigger step. Plus, Ed Quinton Johnson this year, another weapon for him. You know, because, Ke- again, Keenan Allen has dealt with so many injuries. Williams has dealt with injuries in his career, too. So right. adding another receiver, adding a more innovative offensive coordinator, I think he takes off even more this season. After, like you mentioned, a down year for him last year. Yeah. I think an, uh, a guy who's, I guess I'll use the word hot seat, Brandon Staley. I think if it doesn't 100%. work out this year, he is so out the door. Um, Wait, can I just say something about Brandon Staley and the Chargers coaching situation before we get to number three here? Yeah, go ahead while I try to change the channel on this TV. I don't know why this TV just started playing. Did you see Colin Coward last week? Like this tape no, that he I had? don't Him watch and- Colin Coward enough. All right, I love Colin Coward. Him and Jason McIntyre, okay, we're talking about the Chargers coaching situation. And they mentioned a scenario in which the Giants would trade Brian Dayball to the Chargers to be the head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. What? Yes, like this was spoken about. And they ended it with, oh, definitely call some picks. Really, Colin? By oh. <laughs> any stretch of the imagination, the Giants said, you know what? Here's one of our best coaches we've had in a while. Yeah. Let's trade him because for the hell of it, for, you know, some picks, like maybe some picks. Like what, what are they going to send? Third rounder, but, take it or leave it. Oh, oh. Also, speaking of coaches. <laughs> oh, God. Do you know who was one of the biggest guys I wanted the Jets to hire before they hired Salah? Probably my number one guy. Oh, can I? Hold on. Me, I'm trying to think of that coaching cycle. Who was it? No, Pat Fitzgerald. Oh, wow. The yeah. Northwestern coach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. Good thing yeah. that happened. Well, hold on. Let's talk about that for a minute. Would have he gotten fired from the Jets if this came out right oh, about now? yeah. Oh, you think yeah. so? Yeah. What do you think would happen? Especially, I mean, that's one place where, all right, the New York media does apply here. Like, he would get freaking eaten up. They would... I mean, they would com- they would have eviscerated him. Yeah, dude. You yeah, know, of course he would get fired. You know what's interesting? Like I saw the arguments, you know, for like, oh, not firing him, and like we've been in a locker room before, and I, you know, football is like obviously it's different, you know, in the college and the professional level. Right, you but like screw coach- around with guys, but you no I mean, no no, no. Is- coaches know everything that oh, goes yeah. on. Yeah. They know everything. They know too much, actually. Exactly. So it's like. You really don't think he knew? Yeah. Like that a tough situation. By the way, I didn't know how much of a loser he was there. I mean, I know yeah. it's not an easy place to win, but like Yeah. You know. Um Jesus God, Christ. We're, we're getting off track here. Uh, so um number three. You're at three. Uh this is one that I think I kind of already spoiled when I did my TikTok the other day. I got Josh Allen third. Yeah, we're gonna have the same top three here. Yeah, we're gonna have the same top three. Let's just rip it. I got Allen yeah. three. Actually, we'll wait. Because uh, visual effects. Uh, I got Josh Allen, number three. Um, Allen, 
is a guy who I think is taking a bit of like a Brett Favre career arc where he's that new gunslinger, that guy who he plays a little reckless. And yeah, you'd like him to clean it up. But I think this is Josh Allen. Like, I think if you asked him to clean it up, like, I don't think he could play the way he plays. Like, I think that's just what you kind of sign up for. I disagree. This this team relies on him a lot. I mean, he's what was that stat? He accounted for 81% of the offense yes. yards last year or something crazy like that. So that's wild. They've been trying to get this running game going forever. I don't think it's really going to be getting going again this year. We'll see. James Cook is the lead back now. Um, but I'd like to hear why you disagree. I know you have Allen third too, but I'd like to hear why you disagree. This entire coaching staff is on the hot seat for me. I love Sean McDermott. Everybody's on the hot seat because you have an ultra talented quarterback here. Okay. You have a roster that is supposedly this great roster up and down offense, defense, right? The quarterback should not be accounting for all these yards. The pressure needs to be taken off of your quarterback. Sure. You know, it's on his shoulders. You're going to be winning because of Josh Allen, but there needs to be some sort of running game. The receivers got to get their heads out of their asses. Okay, they need to figure these things out. Take your some pressure off this quarterback, and the recklessness has to stop. I mean, it has to. Stop. The they throws need... that he was making last season were putrid. The some yeah. of those interceptions oh, yeah. were disgusting. It's really weird to say it, but this team kind of needs like an offensive identity. Like, yeah, they have a great offense, but. We've seen it in big games for them. It's a little too much, wow, this team's on right now. Holy crap, they're on fire. And then a little bit, of, wow, this this offense looks like crap. Like, they got to get going here. And I know that happens to every offense, but it seems like with them it happens a little bit more than it should when you have that much talent. Um, And I think it's it's with the running game. I mean, I am just, doing my – it's July 13th, okay? and I'm And it's early, and I'm doing my research, you know, for predictions and gambling purposes – Who's going to be good? Who's not going to be good? Who's making the playoffs? Who in the division? At this point right now, like, I am seriously considering having the Bills miss the playoffs. Like, that's how worried I am. About I, team. Okay, that is a little crazy for I'm me. A little, I'm a little but worried about them. I Again, this isn't Jet fan talking. Like, I just, before the Jets even got Rodgers and I thought we were going to be this relevant this year, I was saying that I think the Bills are going to have a down year. Like, I yeah. feel like they're just, what we saw last year in the playoffs and – Kind of got exposed a little bit, and I could really see them having it down here. Yeah. I think Miami's going to win the division. As of, as of today, I think Miami wins the division. That's where I'm at. But that's, it's early, and it could change. That but, defense for me is just a little too suspect. I know a lot of people, you know, they're still a good defense. Don't get me wrong. I don't think they're going to be like a bottom 10, 10 defense in the league. I think they're still going to be a good defense. But um, I think that secondary is a lot worse than people think it's really good. Yeah. Jamie's Howard and Jalen Ramsey are the most overrated duo of corners in the league. I talk ad nauseum about this, um, but we're, we're going to forever on this. I um, can't wait to discuss all of this because we are going to have some great conversations prediction wise yes. and about divisions and stuff. But um, what am I up? We, I, I'm well, up to our number three, two's, Allen, our number two is Joe Burrow. Um, Burrow is I, I love this whole comparison. It's really cool to think about. Like, who's the Brady, who's the Manning, who's mm. the Philip Rivers, who's the Roethlisberger, and everything like that. And I think that there's going to be actually two Bradys and two Mannings because, they, I mean, it's a discredit to Josh Allen and the Justin Herbert and the Lawrence and whoever, and even Lamar, whoever throws their name in that mix, where a Justin Herbert and a Josh Allen are going to be better than a Ben Roethlisberger and a Philip Rivers. Um, but I really do think that Burrow is... Peyton Manning like I think like he fits Manning to a T where he's just Mahomes owns the AFC and he owns the NFL but I think Burrow is going to be that little like thorn in the ass for Pat Mahomes where oh it's us again and he's going to get his ring and he's going to win you know win the AFC and win that AFC championship so they talk a lot of crap though for you know losing to this team especially last year they talk a lot of the Bengals man they own them they were they yeah, for the freaking first time last year. Yeah, but I would not be running my mouth to Patrick Mahomes. I, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing that. I, I, I'm i sorry. Can not I just say that? that guy. I think Travis Kelsey, I think the Kelsey brothers in general are really cool. 
But I think Travis Kelsey sometimes is like really corny with like the whole like you better watch your mouth and this and that. And like I think like sometimes he takes it a little bit overboard and he did that with the Bengals. It's like just, it's a nice uh, rival. It's a nice rival. It is. It's a good rivalry. Yeah, yeah, wait for the Jets to. Mm. Nah, that's my dream. If the Jets it's, are in that mix, it's legit. Um, it's like I'm. I was thinking about it today in the car. Like I've never. I don't remember a time where we had this many teams in the AFC fighting. Let's just make it five. like an AFL championship and an NFL it, championship. It, it again. really like, like it is. It's unreal what it's, it's going to be. So ridiculous. I I really like if the if the Jets, you know. Make it to the AFC Championship. I'll be like, oh, it's just, this is like making the Super Bowl, basically. Yeah. You know? And, like, watch. The, the 49ers or the Cowboys or the Eagles. Right, we'll win it. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, they, they were arrested, basically, getting into there. Yeah. Uh, and Mahomes is one. one. I mean, yep. do we need to discuss? You know, I'm watching that that documentary really. today. Yeah. Um, And it's like, you just think about, like, Mahomes and his career and, like, how he's just gotten here. It's unreal. Because I remember watching this is guy. Is he, first of all, He's definitely reached that level where if he literally just retired today, he'd be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. He's got the MVP. He's got two Super Bowls. He's got the Super Bowl MVP. I mean, you know, the resume already is like end of the end of the career. Wow, that's a great career. Yeah. Um where is he number one for you in terms of you know what? I'm gonna extend the fur the question even further. I know he's number one for you for quarterbacks that you've ever watched in terms yeah. of talent. Yeah. I know it's hard to compare other sports, but where does he rank in terms of that wow factor that you have watched? So throw away anything before the year 2000 or when you really start watching sports mm-hmm. like 2006 yeah. or whatever. Where does he rank for you in terms of like, wow, that is a spectacle. Like, I can't believe what I'm watching. I think Shohei is one right now. Yeah. And then... I feel like there's only four guys you could really put in this category. And, it's going to be LeBron, Curry, and, Brady. Exa- no, LeBron, Curry, Otani, and him. Guys, because you know Oh, me, yeah, okay. I think Rodgers, up until Mahomes, was the best quarterback I've ever seen throw a football. And okay. I said that way before he was a New York Jet. Like I, Rodgers was just incredible. And I never thought we'd see another guy like that, at, at least for a while. And Mahomes, I think, could just do it a little better. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, the only thing that Rodgers does better than Mahomes – is that touch that Rodgers has on the ball, the way he could just kind of dump it in the bucket like that. Mahomes can hit a 70-yard pass in stride, but when I'm talking about that little touch and that little – I know exactly what you mean. Like that and ball placement on the sideline, everything like that, I think Rodgers hasn't beat there. But in terms of improv and throwing on the run and everything, I mean, and all the arm angles, like it, Mahomes is just incredible. Yeah, I think he'll end up being the best quarterback ever, like the greatest quarterback ever. And God who's, willing, he stays healthy. And who's like your first guy out? What do you mean? Uh, top ten, like who's eleven? It was between Geno and Stafford. People forget about Stafford, and yeah, I had Stafford. You know, I like I. I don't want to disrespect Stafford. I don't like he won the Super Bowl the last time he was fully healthy. You know, so. He's probably right on the outside. Him and Gino, Kirk, and Jones are, were probably right there. Like that I had Goff. Really I had Goff there. Oh, and right. Goff. Goff's there. Yeah. yeah. That's probably 15, if I had to guess. That, yeah. Those are the 15 guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, that basically wraps it up. Um, we're going to – for NFL. Yeah. And uh, I guess, you know, there's a little bit when you talk about Cook and Hopkins. I mean, I don't – It looks like he's going to be a Titan Hopkins as yeah. of right now. So let me ask so you this question about him. Yeah. Is it just like I'm shocked that the Bills and the Chiefs are not in the mix here? Like more the money. It's the money. The, it's, I was going to say, not, is it money? But if money. I'm Hopkins, I don't want to throw like, trust me, if I was, you know, in any walk of life, if I had, you know, $20 million in the bank right now and you gave me an opportunity to do two things that are similar in terms, you know, that he's playing football no matter where he goes. So two things that are similar and one pays. Two million more than the other. I'm probably going to take the two million one, right? You know, I'm probably going to take more money. But for Hopkins, like he's been on some really bad teams over his career. He's already a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Like he's he's done what he's had to do. If I'm him, like I probably just care about winning the most right now. Like I'd take a pay cut. Yeah, and I'm trying to look at the contracts that he's had. Um, he signed a big contract with Houston, no? Yeah. So like, 
yeah, you're kind of right. Like, why wouldn't you just take a little bit less and go play for Buffalo? I think Buffalo makes the most sense. Like, oh yeah, you're the number two because I don't. I think if he goes to Tennessee, like, I kind of think we're gonna see you know a drop off from him. He's like not a Julio Jones. Guy. What happened to Julio Jones? Like, exactly. He's not, maybe a little less. You know, he's a little younger, but he's not gonna be the same guy. So it, it worries me. I think he has to go to a situation where he's one A, one B, or you know, even the number two guy for me. Right. Yeah, and, and, and I Cook, mean, Cook's gonna wait. Cook's gonna wait to see what happens with um, Jacobs and Barkley. He's not gonna sign for another week or two. Here. I think also with Cooks, I was talking about this just in terms of fantasy football. I would it, what I would expect for Jared for Jared Cook. What I would expect for Dalvin Cook going into this year, I would judge that based off his contract. Like if he gets yeah. a big contract, you know, uh, just AAV wise, if he gets ten million a year, I'd be like, oh, okay, he's gonna be a big part of whatever offense he goes to. But if he gets less than that. Also, he's Zeke, get, where the hell is Zeke going? I mean, he's getting he's getting less than that, and he's gonna. I think he's gonna end up in Miami. That's where I think. Yeah, he's going. yeah, it's just inevitable. Um, all right, we'll take a quick break, and we're gonna talk a little interesting baseball topics for a short while. Today's episode is brought to you by NSE Windows. NSE Windows is a Marvin Windows certified installation company and replacement outlet located in Massapequa, Hopog, and Watermill on Long Island, New York. NSE Windows services include professional windows and door installation and replacements. NSE is an official dealer of Marvin and their signature, Elevate, and Ultimate collections, as well as other window and door brands, such as Provia, True Style, and Reed. Make sure to find them in Watermill, Hopog, or Massapequa, and visit www.nsewindows.com for a tour of their virtual Watermill showroom, or give them a call at 516-500-3550. All right, we're back. Episode 100 of the Hardline Sports Talk. John Michael Masiri, Michael Merlo here with you. And long football um, segment. So good to be back, though. So great to be talking football again, man. So excited. You know what? It's so exciting, too. The, 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 the week, you know, right after the Sunday when you get to talk about all the games that just went down. The best. It's, it's nice. It's just nice. There's, there's nothing better. But um, we're still in the midst of baseball season, and it's not as enjoyable as it was last season for us uh, Mets and Yankee fans. But we're going to discuss it here. Uh, first off, All-Star Game, record low um, viewership. Let's give ourselves a round of applause for boycotting that terrible, terrible game with the god-awful uniforms. All right, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to undo my clap there. Okay. Um, First of all, I actually like the uniforms. Yeah, they were disgusting. Of recent years, they were pretty nice. Yeah, um, disgusting. And I love the All-Star game. I think it's great, everything they do. I think you watch these other sports. You watch the Pro Bowl, which doesn't even exist anymore. They just do stupid challenges now. Um, and you watch the NBA All-Star game. You know, they're playing real baseball out there. Like no, They're but- competing. And you have guys are mic'd up, which was great. I thought the whole Yavaldi mic'd up was great. I thought Hayter and uh, Albies in the same inning mic'd up. That was great. In all seriousness, Carroll facing Yavaldi, they were talking to each other as they're as he's hitting. That was very cool, and what they've done with the mics is very cool. And I'm half joking when I say, "Oh, you know, terrible game," because they do have the best All Star, you know, festivities. The Home Run Derby yeah. is real solid. Uh, the All Star Game is the best because they're legitimately playing. So I do take that back, kind of too. I'm just a little pissed off. I like when they wear the traditional uniform. Oh yeah, see all yeah. The- the team's colors out there. I hate that they're all wearing, you know, these uniforms. I don't know why and they switched it. Just do the way you used to do it. Do it for the Derby and then let them wear their uniforms for the game. Right. And I was a little peed off that Perdomo got in over Lindor, but whatever. Right. I, I didn't really watch much of the game. I was out for dinner, but um, yeah. I'm surprised about the viewership that it's down now. But you know what? When you really look at it, it it's still number one. Like it doesn't yeah. matter. Like they, it's still the number one viewed All Star game. You know, also out of the four major sports. I think what's, n- I don't think they account for this now, is, a lot of people are using like illegal streams to watch these games. Like, it's the not, stre- it's not the way it used to be though, where you had to watch it on cable. Like, when I when I was living in co- at college. And you know the, the stuff is delayed, or we just didn't didn't have subscriptions for certain things. Like a lot of it, you lo- you go on to Stream East and you start watching. You know, are you about the, to admit you broke the law? Or the All Star? Yes, I am a criminal. 
Um, no, I don't know. You know what's funny? I don't know how they account for the people like streaming on like Fubo and YouTube TV. I'm guessing they do account for those. But right, that right, is, no. yes, but people going on a streamies.com yeah. and you know clicking right. through a million ads to watch a game that that obviously doesn't count. Right, but I don't know. Summer people don't really care, but. Either way, uh, Home Run Derby was exciting. Uh, the game was okay. The National League won for the first time in forever, so yeah, good for them. And uh, that's it there. But the real talk of the entire weekend was um, Shohei Otani, as it basically is at all times when it comes to um, baseball at this point. Uh, you know, it just to reiterate something, like, you know, we talk about this is the first, you know, the, really the second coming since Babe Ruth. Like, Babe Ruth did not hit and pitch like this at the same time. So, like, this is even more special than that. So, he's the greatest baseball uh, player of all time. Like, right, like, right now, talent wise. Like, I'm right. Like, I'm not saying like he's got to play for years to actually earn that title, but like, what he's doing right now is the greatest thing that we have ever seen. And And now it trumps trumps Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, you know, he was on roids. And listen, Barry Bonds would have been a great player either way, but can't deny the fact he was on steroids. And right. Like, they're showing the graphics. It's one of those things where you got to, like, screw it in your brain and be like, like, look at it, like, five times and be like, wow. Like, he has – it's leading the league in home runs, has the best offensive statistics in baseball, and he has the – he's number one in batting average against as a pitcher. He's, like, top three in strikeouts. Like, he is elite at both positions. And we're about to start talking about it with trades, like, you know the Yankees is are possible. Rumored, the Yankees are rumored to be a team that really wants him. Um, which obviously, who the hell wouldn't want him? But right now, at the deadline, that really wants him. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, as any fan would do. All right, if we get Otani, like, what does our team look like? Like, how does it help us? This and that. And I'm like, all right, well, we get a big bat. Like, we need that bat behind Judge. Like, we need to. Like, Stanton just hasn't been that guy since he came back from injury last year. Like, he's been pretty awful. Like. We just don't have that feared bat to be behind judge Rizzo is that guy. And you know, Rizzo isn't feared. Like he's a right. good hitter, but he's not feared. Um, and I'm like, wow. Okay. Otani's definitely that guy. And then you look at it. I'm like, we have another ACE now too, like for next to Cole. So my team's getting an ACE and an MVP bat in the same player like that is ridiculous and that's why i think it's impossible to trade for him like i, I just don't think there's any right, like trade. what package do you put together for this guy and like the angels are gonna have to make this decision in the next two weeks where it's like well we're we gonna be out of it because you know they're, they're like and a we, fringe playoff team a few yeah, games let's out talk of it. about this they are idiots if they don't trade him like they you i think so i think they should have traded him before the season even started to be honest with you i get not doing that but to hold on to him now, you are like so dumb to not to not trade. So, do you him. think he's going to be traded? Like I've uh, no, of- no. I think they're going to be stubborn. I think they're going to hold on to him. They're going to be five games out of the wild card, but at the trade deadline, and they're going to hold on to him. Merlo, they could reset their farm. Like they could give themselves one of the best farms in baseball by trading this guy. They could get a, a good major league player and multiple top 100 prospects but that's the problem he's gonna walk anyways that's the problem what team is going to because no matter what happens right even if he goes to the let's just say the dodgers were to trade for him i don't think they're going to but let's just say the dodgers were to trade for him he's still going to test the open market oh yeah there's no scenario in which he does not test the open market that's what i wanted to talk about with the yankees is would I love to get Shohei Otani? Yes. Do I want the Yankees to trade for him? Hell no. Because right. we're going to have to give up all this stuff. I still think if we get Otani, this really isn't our year. Like, I, I just think this team is – we're lacking depth right now. We're lacking one through nine depth. We're lacking depth in at the bottom of the rotation. Like, I don't think that Otani – we get him and all our problems go away. Like I just And by the way, you there's no guarantee Judge comes back. Yeah, so. great point. Who knows if Judge is even going to come back. So you're going to give up a Jason Dominguez and Austin Wells and more guys and maybe even major league talent for a half season of this guy and then hope that, you know, he re- he signs with you in the offseason? Like, no, he's just going to – he's going to be a Dodger. Like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, yes, he's going to um, test the open market. The only other team, and I 
I'm going to steal it from you because I think you're about to say it. The only other team that is like sneaky is the Mariners. I actually, See, I'm thinking them, but I'm thinking another team too. What? I think the John, I think the Giants have an unbelievable shot of getting him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. I, I, I think it's going to be a war. People are saying, oh, the Mets are going to raise the prize. The Yankees are. Uh, I, I think, think the think Mets and the Yankees got like less than like a 5% chance each. Again. I think they're out. I yeah. think it's Giants, Dodgers, and then a piece of the Mariners. Yeah, I agree. Because apparently he's been living there, too, for a couple of off-seasons in What's Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, he's been living there. He likes the city. He made nice comments about the city yeah. uh, during All-Star Week. But, yeah, you mentioned it. Like, what can you possibly get for him where you say, like, oh, it's worth it? Is there going to be a team desperate enough that legitimately trades their entire farm system? I don't think, think it's going it. to be one of our teams. Think about the commitment. Like, let's just hypothetically say the Yankees trade for him and then they re-sign him in the offseason, right? You are giving up your number one and three and seven prospect, we'll just say. And maybe so may, uh, think about it. Let, let's a lot of people listening to this are gonna know the names of right. the Yankee prospect. A lot of local let's just say it's Volpe, Dominguez, Wells. I don't think Volpe's in involved. In I, I, I don't I think there's no way to give up Volpe, but I think and if they and if they and if you said that, if the Cashman said that, I would hang up the phone if I was already Marino, let's say, because right, I let's would say not make the deal without him. Let's say there. it's Dominguez, per, uh Peraza, Wells, and like Clayton Clayton Beater, and then like like Nestor, like someone like that, like a you know a a, a middle of the pack kind of pitcher. Yeah. Um. Let's say it's them. So you give up all of that for a half season with Otani, and then you resign you resign Otani for ten years, five hundred fifty million dollars. Think about the commitment that you just made to this guy, and rightfully so. I mean, he deserves it. He's yeah. like I just said. I mean, literally right now, he's the greatest thing we've ever seen. But you are like. Holy crap! Are you putting you're 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 not even putting all your eggs in one basket? You're putting all your eggs and some people other people's eggs in one basket too. See, and there are some, t- and I don't think the Yankees are one of those teams that can actually afford that risk. They're not in and the I position think, to do it, and I and I don't think the Mets are in that position either. Although they might just say screw it, they, they do it, they try. The Dodgers have set themselves up for this position. What they legitimately set themselves up for it, right? And what did we say about the Yankees when we were talking the uh, you know, last episode about? homegrown players and everything like that and and developing these guys and then building around them. Like the Yankees right now, their only homegrown player that they can really, you know, say is a a big part of their team is Aaron judge. Can I say something really quickly about the Yankees? Some WFAN caller called up today and said, um, Brian Cashman's been trying to make his own core for like G Michael did. And that's why he's been holding on to prospects. And I thought about that for a good hour. And I'm like, he may be right about that because he had opportunities to go trade for legitimate players at traded lines and in off season and refused not to. Yeah. What's our, what's our core for Gary Sanchez, Clint Frazier, Miguel Andujar, uh, you know, Estevan Florial. Is that our, is that our Glaber, Glaber core but Marco, yeah, but you know, well, I'll transition real quick to Arenado too because he's another guy who's got. That's a guy the Yankees should trade for. No, he's not, and that's yes, what I know. I, there is why with this team would you trade for a thirty-two-year-old third baseman on a big contract on a long contract? Like I, I don't, I don't see why. Ar- you know what the Yankees missed out on? They should have been the team that traded for Matt Olson. They should have been the team that traded for Sean Murphy. These guys that are young, that can be your eight-year, ten-year contract that you could sign a guy to like the Braves did, and the Braves are so smart for doing it, and that's why the Braves are going to be so good for the freaking 50 years or however long this team they should have also They should have also maybe go and signed Corey Seager right. or you know a lot of shortstops were available, and the Yankees did something they never did before. They said – Oh, well, we have these guys waiting in the wings. You know, we'll, we'll we'll let them we'll let them take it over in a couple of years. That never happened with the Yankees. If there was a player they really wanted, they went out and got that player. Right. And the future, you know, the prospect would have either had to move positions or figure, you know, or, or he was traded. Right. And you know that I mean, I've we've talked ad nauseum about it with you know the Yankees. People say the Yankees are cheap, and of course they're not cheap. They have the second highest payroll in baseball. The Yankees' problem is they spend money. But when you look at the roster, you're like, where the hell is all this money? We we talked about both teams a, a so month you, ago you, about you where want, it is. Right. You don't want Seager. You don't you don't get, you know, Seager. You don't get Semyon. You didn't sign Correa, which thank God. But, you know, you don't go after some of these guys. Machado, Harper. We could go back to the earlier days. But so where's all this money? Oh, 
Aaron Hicks making $10 million. Oh, Josh Donaldson is making $25 million. Like, there are guys on this team where you're like, that's where the money is. And can I, that's not where the money should be. Can I say something about Aaron Otto quickly? Um, Aaron Otto's contract, so this year it's $35 million. In 2024, it's 35 2025, it's 32. It goes down to 27 and 26 uh, in 2026. And then it's 15 and um, 2027. So it goes down gradually. I think, like, you know, we've seen players, you know, he just looks like a guy that would come to New York and come to the, specifically the Yankees and hit in that stadium. Like, he just well, looks like that guy. Like, I'm I not going to complete. All right. I'm not going to. You're, you're convincing me a little bit right now. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an open minded person and I value your opinion. So, I mean, Jesus Christ, I, we're sticking with the, Obviously, Josh I'm not going to be. Uh, uh, third base. I don't want Nolan Arenado. Uh, you know, I don't want the, the, the best third baseman of the past decade. Like, obviously, you know, yeah. it's nice to have Nolan Arenado. It's just, it's almost like the Yankees are in such a delicate situation right now. Like, I don't know which side to pick. So I'd rather have neither of them because it's just too stressful to think about. Like, you are in a crucial situation where Aaron Judge is 30 years old, going on 31 years old. Garrett Cole ain't getting younger. John Carlos Stanton certainly ain't getting younger. T- to be honest with you, I think his best days are behind him. Like, I think I think this is – I think it might go downhill real quick here. I don't know. And if think can- about the players I- available next season. You right. Know, in so it's like – so what do you do? Do you – just say we got to tear it down now, and hopefully, in a you know, do a retool like we did in 2016. Hopefully, next the year after that, 2025, we're competing. Or you could say, okay, these guys ain't getting younger. We're really at the end of our window now. Let's go all in. Let's get Arenado. Let's do take a Texas Rangers approach and just freaking a Mets approach and just freaking blow through every luxury tax there is and 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 be aggressive here. Bold prediction. Aaron Allen plays perform. in New York. Plays in New York at the end of the year. Seventy percent. I think he's Yankee. Thirty percent. I think he's a Met. I think he's. I think he's in New York by the end of um this season. Do the Mets have the prospects to trade for him though? Not I think Alvarez, Ronnie yeah, Mauricio. Tra- it seems like is going to be another one of these guys that kind of just like never amounts to anything. I would package Mauricio Vientos, their first round pick last year, Parada, and go grab him. But also, got to realize something: taking the money off of it, taking all of the cash, and I think in the Yankee situation they would do this as well, may lower the prospect value a little bit. Right. So, um, but yeah, I think that, I, I think it's more. I think it's a Yankee move. I think the Yankees. I think the Yankees should get him. Like that's my bold prediction. I think right. the, I think Aaron is a New York Yankee, right. and he should be, and yeah. he should be. Yeah. Um, is that gonna do it here? I think it is, man. That was fun. It was a long episode. It was a good episode. You oh, very quickly, World Series prediction right now. Go winner matchup both matchup matchup winner matchup winner. Before we get out of here, quick. I mean, quick. Can you really say anybody else but the Braves to come out of the NL though? Like you know, I I'd like to say the Reds. You know, holy crap, what a story that would be. Um. I wouldn't count the Padres out to make the playoffs. I think they could have a nice second half here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say the Braves. AL? AL's dicey. AL's very dicey. Real dicey. All right, you ready? Screw it. I'm going Braves-Orioles, and I'm going to take Jesus the Braves. Christ. I'm, I'm going Dodger. I'm going Dodgers-Astros. Oh, that's you know, so boring. They, bo- they both make big what, moves. 20 now? They both make big moves, get starting pitchers, and uh, go on a run. Best team never wins. Look at the last yeah. two years. Look at the Braves last season, the Dodgers. No, last that's season. not true. The Astros won last year. I the mean, Astros did. You're right. Yeah, but it's like every other year the best team doesn't win. So maybe this year the best team doesn't. Win. But it's it's you know what? No, the, Do- the Astros weren't the best team last year though. The Dodgers yeah, technically they the were best in the team. AL. Yeah, but the Dodgers are the best team. 111 yeah, wins. But like the Astros, you know, they're a dynasty. No, yeah, but they weren't the best team in baseball last year. Um, I would say the Dodgers were. So we got for the Braves. We got top ten running backs coming up or whatever yeah. position we're gonna go to next. Very um, interesting. Dude, it's fun, man. I just you know, we're at the end here, so I guess uh we don't have to I was waiting to kind of give a little speech. Not a speech, but um, thank you. Another thank you. Another thank you. I mean, you know, it it's really meant a lot. You know, we had this vision. I mean God, I mean, remember you called me. I was in my college dorm. You said, you want to do a podcast? And I was like, 
we talk about sports all day anyway, so we might as well make a freaking podcast. So, I mean, it's been a, it's been a great journey. I, I love doing this. I mean, I, I really don't care. You know, I want us to grow big and, 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 and as big as we can, but I really don't care at the end of the day. I always tell myself as long as I'm having fun doing it, like that's all I really care about. And it, I, I feel like I get more excited every day to record these things. So, um, it's been a blast, uh, really just appreciate everybody that listens to this family, friends, strangers, whoever listens to this. It's been fantastic. Like you said before, the people that come up to us, I mean, people who we haven't seen in years from high school or wherever yeah. else that say, how's the podcast? I watch, I love it. You guys are great. You know, we really appreciate every single one of you and and thank you for all that. So I'm just a lot. Uh, very grateful. And like I said before, man, episode 200, let's, let's, let's get after it. Exactly. We're, uh, we're closer than ever. So let's, uh, let's get there. It's been a lot of fun and, uh, we hope to continue to grow and, uh, again, just thank you. And let us know, you know, we don't, we, we never change is Okay. We never want to stay the same for, for forever. So, and we've made changes. If you guys want some other stuff, um, I mean, we're big fantasy football players. Uh, we, we both, you know, like to like to dabble in the gambling, especially around football season. So if, if you want yeah. to see some stuff more in that area, like by no by no means, please, you know, shoot us an email. We always have our email. Shoot us there. an email. Yeah. And and one of these days, we're gonna get a nice guest on this show. And I'm really freaking trying to get a certain someone who keeps answering my email and then when I follow up, seems to just fall off the face of the earth. We're so, wor- we're working. We're working. We're working.